Hello, pre-calculus students. This is uh, date five of uh, unit seven, and uh, we're just going to go over solutions to a worksheet that you should have done for homework. Um, this is uh, how to add fractions with trig expressions. So what you can see on the left is the um, the analogous um, algebra that you'd be doing with the trig expressions on the right. So each problem, you should do one on the left and do one on the right, and hopefully uh, you proceeded through this way. And remember, when you add fractions, you have to have the same uh, denominator. So in this case, because we have the same denominator x, then this would just be 1 plus 2, and that would be 3 over x. When we come over here to this one on the right, um, we have the same denominator, sine of x. So that's going to be sine of x, and the numerator will be 3 in this case. Uh, the next one is going to be, um, since both have the denominator x, the numerator will just be y plus 2. And so when we come over here to the right side, it's all over sine of x. So the top would be cosine of x plus 2. The next one, number 3, this is the first one we see where we don't have the same denominator. The denominator has got to be x for both fractions. So we're going to switch this one. Instead of it being 1, we're going to change that fraction. We'll put the 1 in the top. And um, we have 1 over x over here. So I'm going to just draw in a different color. We want to put an x in the bottom. Whatever we put in the bottom, we have to put in the top. So we basically have um, the addition of um, x plus 1 in the numerator over the fraction x, over the denominator x. So over here, we can do the same sort of thing. We can put, um, we have 1 plus 1 over sine of x. So in the numerator and denominator, I'm going to introduce the same term, so it's still equal to 1. So we have sine of x over sine of x, and that's going to result in sine of x plus 1 in the numerator and sine of x in the denominator. For the next one, we want to put um, a denominator would be y. So we would have... Um, We want to put a y in the bottom. We have y in the top right now. So in red, I'll do the y over y. So what we're basically adding is y squared plus 1 all over y. So we do the same thing over here. On the right, we have tangent of y plus 1 over tan of y. So when I want to introduce the tangent to the bottom, just like I did before, I have to put a tangent of y in the bottom and then tangent of y in the top, and this results in our addition to be tan squared of y plus 1 all over tangent of y. Moving right along, we see we have a's and b's um, in the first part, so we're going to let rewrite this. We have a over b, and the next one is b, but I'd really like to put that over a denominator b. Whatever I put in the bottom, I've got to put in the top for adding fractions, and my result is going to be a plus b squared. Don't write 2b there, it's b squared all over b. The next one is uh, we want to introduce cosine into the bottom of the second part. So I have sine of x over cosine of x. It's just rewriting the original. I have cosine of x in the numerator. I'm going to introduce cosine of x in the bottom and the top. Remember, I could do this because I'm multiplying top and bottom by the same thing, which is equivalent to 1. So now this is the same as my denominator is both cosine of x, and so I have sine of x from the first fraction plus, and cosine times cosine is cosine squared of x. Make sure you do not make that 2 cosine of x. This next one, it's just easy because um, the denominator is b in both, so all you have to do is 1 plus, 1 plus a from the left part and minus a from the right, and you end up getting just 1 over b. The a's cancel. On the next one, same sort of thing. It's uh, cosine squared is in the bottom of both. So um, you're going to have cosine squared of x in the bottom. You have the same denominator, so you're going to write out 1 minus sine square root of x plus sine square root of x minus sine square root of x. So hopefully you see that the signs cancel. We have 1 over cosine square root of x. Um, 
Now we move on to number seven. As we get deeper into the problems, things get a little more and more complicated. So the common denominator here is going to be AB. So I'm going to write up the original fractions in blue. I have A, A over B minus B over A. So in red, I'm going to, I want to, I have to put an A in the bottom of that first one because I want it to be AB. So I have to put an A in the top. Over here, I have to put a B in the bottom. So I'm going to put a B in the top. This is going to result in having the same denominator. So the answer is going to be all over AB, but the numerator is going to be A squared minus B squared. So hopefully you can see how that's not 2A, that's A squared and that's B squared. And the one on the right, the common denominator is going to be cosine of x sine of x. So I'll just write it out kind of like I did before. Actually, exactly like I did before. I want to have, um, I have to introduce into both different um, terms, but so I have the same denominator. The denominator is going to be sine of x cosine of x or cosine of x sine of x. So I need to put a sine of x here, so I multiply the top by sine of x. Here I have to put a cosine of x in, so I'm going to multiply the top by cosine of x. My result is going to be, I'll put the result in blue, sine of x cosine of x, and the top will be sine squared of x minus cosine squared of x. Hopefully this is helping you guys understand how we work with these trigonometric um, fractions. So on the next one, we need a denominator of a squared, okay, because we have a here, a squared here. So let's go to the least common denominator is a squared. So I'm going to rewrite this as 1 over a minus 1 over a squared. I don't have to do anything to the one on the right. I have to put an a in both top and bottom, so I get to a squared. And this is going to result in a squared in the bottom, and I have a minus 1 in the numerator, because that was a minus 1. Next one, I do the same sort of thing. I'll just redraw it. I have um, the denominator is going to be sine squared. So let's write sine of x, and over here I've got minus sine squared of x, which is the same as sine of x times sine of x. So in the numerator, I'm going to have to adjust the bottom, I have sine of x, and I had a 1 in the top, so that originally was that, but I put the sine of x in both places, and the other one just had the 1 in the top to begin with, so now when I add these together, I'm over sine squared of x, so now I've got the numerator, sine of x minus 1. Moving on to the next one, um, I have a over a plus 1 over a. Well, um, common denominator is a squared. Uh, I'm sorry, it's going to be a. So the first one was just plain old a over 1 plus 1 over a. So if I want to make it a in the bottom for both, I've got to put an a in top and bottom. And when I add these, now that I can add them because they've got the same denominator, I've got a in the bottom and a squared, not 2a, a squared plus 1. And the same sort of thing happens on the right. So I'm going to put sine of x in the bottom of the, of the left term. And then that turns this one into um, sine squared of x plus 1 all over sine of x. Last one. And we're almost at 10 minutes. So that's, we're going pretty good. So we want to have... Um, we have 1 over b minus b. I want to put a b in the bottom of the second term to have the same denominator. So that would be b over b. We have the same denominator, so I have 1 minus b squared all over b as a final answer there. For the next one in, on the right, we do the same thing but with sine of x. 1 over sine of x minus sine of x, I've got to introduce sine to top and bottom. And that results in 
having sine, I'm sorry, sine in the bottom. And I have one minus sine squared of x. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you to um, understand what to do when you see fractions with trig functions being added. I know this is a review topic, especially for the left column, but it helps to see how it relates to um, trig functions. So anyway, um, look forward to hearing your comments. Please answer the questions in the form that this video is embedded in so that it can guide my instruction for the next time we meet. Have a good day.